so many people wrote in really good intro ideas. So Nikki pulled a few and we're going to do one today. Instead of just saying, hey, Jen, hey, Em. Because <laughs> we feel so awkward every time. Okay, so I'm just going to start. We're, and each week we'll just try a different one. Yep. And winner, maybe if some if people like it and we win one, we'll send them merch. Oh, I love that. Or like that, yeah. we could send them and or and and or we could send them our new journal. We have a journal on Amazon now. We've created a journal. If you haven't checked it out, you should check it out. Give it an order. There's 25 journal prompts in there. So check it out. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. There's quotes, there's journal prompts, um, lots of places to write. It, it's really cool because the way it's designed is for you to choose whatever you like in whatever order. Cause it doesn't force different. the journal prompts yes, on you. Exactly. It so just you gives you choose. ideas. Yep. Yes. Um, and so it's on Amazon. So it'll be linked with everything. It'll be linked in these show notes, but a really great way to continue amazing work that you're doing on yourself. Um, but for today, we're going to start with a wonderful intro of, hey, this is from Katie. Katie wrote this in. Hey, Jen, what's something new you learned about yourself this week? Oh God, I didn't even prepare for this. <laughs> <laughs> something new. I Does it have to be deep? Nah, it can be like, I love painting my toenails red. Right. I don't know if that's what Katie meant, but that's what I'm going to mean today. Right. Okay. Okay. What... Did I learn about, do you have one? You go first. Okay. What I learned about myself this week is that I need to <laughs> watch how I use the word stupid around my daughter because oh. like, I was like, ah, oh, this stupid book. And then my daughter kept calling books stupid. And I was like, that was a mistake that I made. So something I learned is just shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, and that's an ongoing journey for me when you have a four-year-old who remembers literally everything you yes, say. Yes, yes. I love that. <laughs> okay. You learned that you like dresses. You bought a dress this week. Oh, I bought a dress. Okay, <laughs> also, okay, here's something I've really been thinking about. Maybe we could turn this into a podcast episode. You know, I was talking to someone yesterday about like – do you like yourself now more than you liked yourself in the past or like this version of you? Mm -hmm. um, and I would say, absolutely. Like, love this version of myself. There is one thing that I miss about the old version of myself. And that is my ability to feel free. Ooh. And, you know, like, you know, because when the weight of your responsibilities takes a hold of you and which is just a natural part of life as you get older it takes you away from your ability to feel as free as you once did like um you know just carefree like i went i went to a beer garden last night and you know i'm like ah oh, you know i can't drink too much i have to do this podcast tomorrow and so so you know the one thing that i learned is i want to connect more to that part of myself that can like let go also i think the taylor swift concert gave me some of that as well it did I, it, and i guess this makes sense of why you have your like um like travel blogger uh fantasy that you have yes, yes. right like i just want to be free i mean this goes to don't own a home yeah <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's like anything, it's any, re any responsibility, yes. you know, that ends up weighing on you over time, but, but there's a beauty in that too, right? Like there's a beauty in having these responsibilities and tending to them and caring for yeah. them. Um, well, it's funny. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if we've talked about it yet, but we're redoing this building in yeah. Westchester. We're going to move our locations. If you're a current Westchester client, it's 500 fucking feet away. So do not worry. It is 500 feet and across the street. So we are not going far, but we're doing this whole building. And you have this amazing friend, Jason, who's been on the show before, who is taking you on a trip. And like, we're having this back and forth about like, oh, is it going to be that when you're away, the building is done and that's <laughs> the move. Like it, it's like this thing that should even be exciting kind of ends up not being exciting when you have this many things, at least at the beginning, because yeah. it feels like, oh, is this timing going to line up? Because right now we're so powerless with it, with the contractors. Yeah. Um, And so even the things you think are going to be free when you have responsibilities sometimes don't feel like that. Yes. And so I think finding that balance. So that's the thing that I've learned about myself is that I want to find more of that balance and be able to be a little bit more free and let go a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> What's that like? No. 
Do you know? <laughs> no, you don't need to let go at all. No, 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 no definitely not. Neither do you. We're just, just straight up, just picture. Picture I'm, perfect. I feel like I'm a little better in this summer because I'm pretty good at sitting outside and doing nothing. You are. You're so tan. I'm, I'm one. I'm, I don't look as tan in these lights right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. What's going on? on us, I know, but you looked actually much tanner than know, me right now. I know now. what's happening. <laughs> but um, I am a little bit better in the summer, but it's hard. Like I, it is a really difficult thing as you get older to feel free. And I think we have moments of feeling free. You probably had a Taylor Swift. I had it when I was in New Orleans two weeks ago partying. Um. But it is, it's like, how do you find, how do you feel free? There was this really good article that came out that um, Amy um, Crichton sent to me about, it was, I think it was from the cut and it was like advice to moms. And it was somebody talking about that their therapist, this, you know, mother of multiple kids, her therapist advice, like go out and do some drugs and have fun. And uh, it was freedom. What the therapist was telling her to do is go seek freedom. Yeah. Or get addicted to drugs. I'm not sure. I honestly right, didn't finish right, the article. Right. I, I, I still sound I hope like that a great that wasn't. I hope that wasn't. <laughs> but if I didn't finish the article, and this is a horrible article to recommend. <laughs> this is the damage of only reading one page. Yes, one thousand percent. You give it a shot, though. <laughs> so, but I think we're. I think as you get older, freedom is very difficult to do because we're all yes. managing anything, which goes in today's episode. Yes. And today's episode is about when things don't go as planned, mm. which happens all the time. All day long. <laughs> When's the last time that happened to you? This morning. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what I thought I, I thought if I woke up early to get a shower, I'll have peace. And then my daughter was awake five seconds later, right? right? Happens all the time. Um, I think that, but I like also in big ways too, right? Like, um, I still think that there is, I know I've talked about this before, maybe people are getting old of it, but I still think that there is residual stuff from COVID for me Yeah, that those were like really difficult years, having a young child and being a new mom and figuring that out. And so I think that there was like a part of like, it didn't go as planned. Motherhood in general just simply did not go as planned for me. I mean, absolutely to yeah. the max. Mm -hmm. But like, does, right. Does anything ever go as planned? <laughs> I think, I think things, you know, some things of course are, are more extreme. Sometimes when I order <laughs> food at a restaurant, it goes as planned that it's delicious and wonderful. Okay. <laughs> I love that. Does that count? <laughs> well, it's a, it's, so that's a good thing to think about is like, are there certain things for the most part go as planned? And because of that, it makes you feel in general, like you have more control over. Mm. So I'll give you an example. When things are out of my control, I will do shit on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> no, you no, never. You won't then spend five hours formatting something. That doesn't sound like Jennifer at all. <laughs> So, so, you know, there are, so, my point of saying that is that there's so many, um, things that will not go as planned because there's so much that we don't have control over. Are there things that we gravitate towards to make us feel like we have more control over, um, things to feel like, okay, if I do this, it's going as planned, or I can at least maneuver it or manipulate it in a way where it, it does, you know, follow suit in some way. Yeah. And, you know, I was thinking about this and we've talked about this on the podcast before. I like to not as much as possible plan things Yeah, <laughs> because I know that if I plan something, I create kind of this rigidity around the idea of it and yeah. typically things don't go as planned. And so I like to kind of like live in the moment as much as possible. Of course, that's not always possible, especially when you own a business. And Emily and I always, you know, talk about this because she has a child. She obviously has to plan things more. Um, but yeah, that is one of the ways that I deal with planning is that I, I try to as much as possible live in the moment. Yeah. I, I usually plan the night before. You know what I like to do is I like to plan a lot and then be incredibly disappointed and very upset um, that it didn't happen that way. That's, and then yeah. really make myself suffer. That's like a yes. general thing that yes. I like to do. <laughs> yeah. Where do you, where, where do you think that's coming from? <laughs> we were to dig a, into that. You want to go back into last week's episode on IFS. Yes. That comes from two my weeks mail. ago, two weeks ago. That's sorry. Sorry. By, um, uh, I like to go. It's been, that's my manager part. 
Mm. Right. So she thinks if she manages everything, then it's all going to be okay. So if I like, I'm like, oh, got it down to the second. The hardest thing is like, this sounds like really dumb, but like mornings end up being sort of, this is, as I'm saying it, I'm aware this is dumb. All right, everyone. But I'll say you can't, you said, you said you were going to stop using the word stupid and dumb. Oh, I'm very sorry. I am aware that this is um, not helpful. There this it is. is not a helpful thing for me to do. Yes. But in the mornings, I drop my daughter off at 8, and then I take an 8 a.m., 8.30 workout class every day. It actually ends up making – it used to be that I was like, I don't give a shit if we're late for school every day. I'll show up at 8.15. Nothing matters. And then I started doing this thing at 8.30, and so it made the mornings a little bit more stressful because I have to leave the house at a certain time. And – But sticking to that routine is also very, very helpful for me. So it is this like, it's a difficult thing to go back and forth of like, oh, am I making myself suffer? But also it's good for me for it to do this way. And it goes back and forth all the time about that. Yes. I mean, on days that my daughter's like, you know, yeah, let's get in the car and get dressed. And there's like other days where she's like, I'm a bumblebee and buzzing around the house as I try to put on her pants on her. So, you know, you yeah. never really know. <laughs> well, I think, I think it, you know, it, this takes us into our first question how the heck do you pivot and how do I let go and move on? Right. Like how do you pivot when you're holding on to this idea of how things should be? Yeah. Um, Because I think you're right that there is something that is so helpful about a routine and to hold on to that routine in a lot of ways. And so how do you pivot? How do you make that shift in your mind when that's happening for you? Yeah. Well, like you get somebody asked it another way, which is how do I mourn, but also move forward? And I think that's what we're talking about Yeah, is let's say, look back and I say, wow, that pandemic really fucked up some shit for me. Yeah. And that was really sad and it was really overwhelming. And I'm really angry about some of the stuff and I'm sad about some of the stuff and that's the morning. And then the other thing that we're going into that we have talked about for, again is the concept of radical acceptance yes. and radical acceptance is that I have no control I'm truly powerless. I don't have to like it. That's the confusion too. You think you have to like it. You don't have to like it. You don't have to be happy about something. And still, this is the way that it is. Yeah. Right. I was just going to say, you know, as human beings, I think we have a natural inclination towards stability and predictability. And so we create these routines for ourselves, these habits for ourselves. And when something throws us off that path, it triggers this fear response for us of like, oh no, this is no longer predictable. Mm -hmm. You know, now I have to be hypervigilant and aware of my environment and our brain can go into this like panic mode of something's wrong, something's off. What am I going to do? Sending stress signals to your entire body. And so I think another thing to do, and we talked about this in our fear episode is to remind yourself, like, you are safe when that happens. It's okay. It's going to be okay. I want you to think about all of the times in the past where things shifted for you, uh, something happened that was unpredictable, and you worked through it. Because I can bet you there has been a million times in the past that you have been able to shift and you have been able to adapt to your environment. Mm. Okay. So I like that. Right. So one of the things you're saying is like, look at where it's worked before and how do you pull on those strengths? Right. Like that's a big part of this. And they said like, how the heck do you pivot? Well, first, I guess you're going to have to figure out what do I want to pivot to? Mm. Do I have to have something else right now? Now, if I'm stranded in the middle of the road and I, and I'm like, oh man, things didn't go as planned when I drove to Arizona, I better fucking pivot to get out of the road. Right. But there was other times where it's like, wow, This job isn't working out the way that I wanted it to. It's not going as planned. Can I take some time to figure out something more? Do I have to make a decision in the moment? How much time do I have it? And I think that is really, um, that's about context and what's going on around it. Because if you're in the middle of the road first, you know, I like this isn't really going the way I wanted to, but I want to figure out some other things first and take my time here. Mm. So like slow it down. And this is also hard because we're also talking about getting out of the emotions or therapist. We love emotions. We love talking about emotions, we love feeling emotions, we love processing emotions, but sometimes get out of your freaking emotions and become logical and rational because the emotion is just, this job sucks. This is not as I planned. It's not going to be that helpful. Just be like, fuck it. Take a shit on your boss's desk and get out. 
although entertaining for me to hear about, probably not going to work out the best way ever. And so how do you lock into, if you're feeling all these feelings around things not going as planned, how do I then have the ability to say, I'm going to put these on the shelf for right now. Mm. I can feel it. I don't have to accept it. I don't have to love it. Put it on the shelf for right now. I'm going to pick up something else of my logic and reason. And then I can also, when appropriate, pull out that other box, feel and process through. The, you know, I think there's, there's also, there's probably a bunch of categories, but, you know, originally we were talking about when things don't go as planned, like small things in your day to day. And I think you brought up another big topic of like, when things don't go as planned, like bigger things in your life, right? Like I went to grad school to maybe become a therapist and I started to become a therapist and that I'm not into it, right? It doesn't yeah. fit for me. And so I have to make a shift. I have to make a transition. Um, and I think that that can be, that's such a, a hard thing to come to terms with, um, especially when you made a big life decision to get yourself to a certain place. And so I know we brought this up a little bit that like, I think it, it also, takes getting to the point where you allow yourself to grieve what that idea of your future looked like. And so when we talk about pivoting, I think we're also talking about grief in the sense of, I need to let myself feel the grief and the emotions that come with, this is not what I expected it to be. This is not what I planned. Yeah. And when you can get to that point of radical acceptance, as you were talking about, then you can pivot right? Then you can make a, a shift. Mm -hmm. But I think when it comes to the bigger things, it, that can be really challenging. That can be a huge life transition. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. How do I get out of the funk if it's something you really wanted, but it didn't happen? Mm. Get out of the funk. I think that, you know, we were talking about not, you know, separating yourself from your emotions. And I think that this is, you know, like if you have allowed yourself to feel it, I think I, I would also dig into like, what are the things specifically that you feel like you lost when you didn't get what you wanted, right? It's not, it's not just about the thing itself. It's about also the things that were connected to it. Like, was it, um, I don't know, were you going, I'm keep going to keep using the job example. Like, were you going out for a job that you didn't get? What were the, the values or the things that you were looking to get out of that job that you feel like you can no longer have? Um, because I also wonder, are there ways to get those things fulfilled in different areas of your life? Um, and that's part of the pivoting too, right? That, that we, we think, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to get this from this one job and I can't get it from anything else. You kind of hold on to this idea. That's where the magical thinking comes into. Mm -hmm. Like when I get this job, I'm going to be fulfilled in X, Y, or Z way. Um, as opposed to, okay, this didn't happen. I have to grieve this. Now, what were the things that I thought that I was going to get out of that, that I, I need no longer am, I'm going to get from this specific job, but maybe I can get it from something else. Maybe I can feel fulfilled in other ways. Um, and so that's where the pivoting comes in of the funk might be, yeah, you got to grieve the idea of like where you thought you were getting those things fulfilled. And maybe you can transition into, maybe I can get those things in other ways. Yeah. Um, it's interesting, right? I, I don't believe the word funk is on the feeling wheels, but I, I do think that you, <laughs> maybe it really should. Cause I think things can feel funky. Um, <laughs> but you are, you're talking about grief, right? That's like a lot of this thing. I know that we end up talking about grief a lot on this show. And I think people are probably shocked by that, but it's actually something we feel a ton, but here's the other thing. I think we have this idea that like, okay, so I'm going to give myself space to process that COVID canceled my wedding. Right. Um, the thing is though, is that you might process it. You might feel fine, have radical sentiments and that's lovely. And then two years later, you might be at a beautiful wedding and you see something you want to do at your wedding and you get knocked on your ass again with grief. And here's the thing about that is it could be things don't go as plans and you're fine with it at the time and you process through. And then three years later, all of a sudden you get smacked out of nowhere. And then there's other times where you see the exact same thing happen at that wedding and you're like, oh man, beautiful for them. Wish it was me, blah, blah, blah. You walk over the ocean wave. 
And that is the thing that I think people get so rocked about is they're so shocked when it comes and hits them three years later. Like, why do I care about this? Like, because you do, because you had lost and because you grieved and because it isn't this like complete acceptance and over situation. And I love that. I love what you're talking about because I think so often people talk about that in the sense of like losing a person, right? That like, if you lost your mom and mother's day comes up five years later, like you're still going to feel that grief that there's a lot of conversation around that. Um, but I think this disenfranchised grief, there's so, so much grief that we go through throughout our lives. And there can be so many things that bring that grief back to the surface that grief is an ever kind of lasting process to go through. And I, I think it's important we talk about it to normalize yeah. it. Um, okay, wait, can I tell you something else? Please, so, always. I don't know if you noticed this in our email. So we have a bunch of shared emails that we're both on the inboxes for. And we got one yesterday. So sometimes when, I don't know, people we love are going through stuff, we always send um, Levon cookies. Is that how I say it? Levin? Levon? I have no idea. Levin? Levin? What? I don't, I don't know. Okay, the big ass cookies from New York, right? You can like send them to people. And that's what we often send as a gift because like who doesn't love big ass cookies? Yesterday, they sent out an email saying um, um, opt out for Father's Day. And it was an entire email saying Father's Day and Mother's Day is incredibly difficult for many people. We're going to be sending out um, things around those holidays. If you want to opt out of our email list now, like we wanted to give you a heads up. Wow. And- I was so shocked to see this. I had never seen anything like that before from a company. Um, And maybe I just missed other companies and they do this plenty, but it was just like really well, I don't know. I was like super impressed that they did that. Did you notice that? Did you see that email at all? No, I didn't know. I miss emails all the time. I just sees one email a week. I have to be like, hey, did you notice all these three emails that we had? Where I'm like, I must read every email, including the full signature. Except for you didn't read that full article. We don't know what the end says. <laughs> it doesn't translate into all forms of media. It does not only the email. Because I'm like anxious. I'm going to miss something, right? Like something huge. But I, I was not you. Not me. But so I was, I was like really impressed with that. And it sort of brought up like, in life, things don't go as planned. Like, I think I'm going to have my parents for longer than I do. I think my dad's going to be able to walk me down the aisle, right? Like, these are all things that, like, we have this plan and visualization. Mm-hmm. And I I want to talk about this other thing. And I also know people are going to roll their eyes. So I'm just, like, going to put it out there right now, which is I think people experience this when they experience gender disappointment in their children. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, you should just be happy with a healthy baby. But, like, listen, people feel whatever they feel. So, like, you just, you know, F off. Um like, I, right. Like I can understand that feeling. I'm someone who has had many, many miscarriages. I have also felt that way of like, oh, you just get a healthy baby. You're so lucky, but whatever. It's totally valid. And so I think people can have this vision, right? I'm running through the yard with my son. I am doing my daughter's hair. And then they end up not having a child like that. Or maybe you even end up having a child who has um, disabilities or has um, high sense, high sensory issues. You can't do their hair. Like there's so many things that can happen. And then you experience disappointment. And I also think it feels like almost silly to them as well. So they don't talk about it and process through it. Yeah. And, and it, what you're speaking to a lot, a lot of this is like expectations that we hold about our lives. And I, it's natural as human beings to hold expectations about what the future looks like. Once again, we crave predictability. Um, the unknown is terribly scary for us. So it's natural for our brains to create a picture of what the future is going to look like. Mm-hmm. And what's tough about that, what we're speaking to a lot is that we can't predict what the future is going to look like, but we do it anyway right? Like we throw ourselves into predicting the future. Um, and oftentimes it doesn't end up looking like that. And so this is a constant process we're going through of grieving, um, these unmet expectations, uh, planning things that didn't end up happening, you know, and I feel like I talk about my dad a ton on this podcast. (laughs) Thank God he doesn't really listen, but, um, I talked to him about this. We, um, we were younger, we used to go on vacation and he always had this idea 
that like we would do these like athletic <laughs> things together <laughs> and we're like laughing what? Because... like climb mountains like what did you want so, you to like, do we went to you 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 guys are super athletic <laughs> that, exactly that's why we're both laughing <laughs> so we went to Canada when I was younger and he had us all <laughs> like bike ride together <laughs> and we were all crying by the end <laughs> every single one of us. <laughs> and so I've talked to him about this a lot because he he holds on to these like expectations of like we're going to go to Canada and we're all going to bike ride my 6-year-old's <laughs> going to bike ride we're all going to have this best. like we're gonna... he pictures it like to be um the uh fucking von trap family <laughs> like sticking in the hills. <laughs> I'm like dad. I <laughs> have the vision of you seeing just be so pissed so, on the so pissed <laughs> i'm more sad <laughs> dude it was such a nice try it was a great it's try such a nice try he, but he tried so many times yeah. over the years <laughs> you know he had this idea that he was gonna have this like athletic family i guess that like loved activities i was like i just want to stay inside <laughs> I know. So it's probably really disappointing for him. It totally but things was. don't go as planned within your family when they're couch potatoes. When you birth, you birth as a bunch of couch potatoes. <laughs> that was us. That was us. Well, now I'm playing tennis with him, which he's thrilled about. But oh, we were sure. we were playing tennis the other day, and we looked next to us, and there was a whole family playing tennis together. I was like, I'm sorry, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't us he, he looks over right and so that's what i mean is that like it might he might have been like oh fully accepting don't care and then he sees something like that and it's like oh that's what i wanted that was like yes. the visual i looked for for myself and the same thing right like let's say you're in your 30s your friends are around you they're all getting um married and having kids and you're going out with some other fucking loser on hinge like it is a very difficult thing to feel like fuck this is like not what i saw for myself that is a good point. I think that comes up so often, um, especially in our generation, because you saw the generation above us getting married so early, having kids so yeah. early, and that has shifted so much in our generation. Um, you know, more people are single, um, more people aren't having children. And so you hear so often that people are like, well, I wanted to be married by 24 and have kids by 25. <laughs> and 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 then they get to 35 and they're like, wow, I am not where I expected to be. That there's yeah. a lot of shifts that you have to go through in that. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. This one I really like. How to manage disappointment and expectations when things change for a good reason, but I'm still hurt and upset. The, I like that question. a lot. Because it's, it's so complex, right? Yeah. Yes. I, I just have something real quick and important feels important to say. <laughs> I don't know if it is. <laughs> well, whatever your feelings tell you. Yeah, let's it might it. be the coffee. It might be the coffee. <laughs> the thing that I want to say is you can feel both things. Yeah. You can feel all of the things. And there's this idea that, okay, yeah, something great happened. I'm not allowed to feel sad, hurt, upset by anything else. You can also feel disappointed at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to share that. And it's okay to allow yourself to feel that too. That yeah. was my important thing. I like it. Thanks. <laughs> um, uh, how to let go of the control and just go with the flow without being overtaken by anxiety. So we're not going to start with <laughs> letting go of control of the biggest thing in your life right? Let's talk about starting small. If you're saying this is a goal I'm working towards, right? The goal I'm working towards is how to let go of control and be more go with the flow without being taken by anxiety. I'm going to have you start with changing one thing that's going on, right? Not the biggest thing, a smaller thing that you can let go of control. So maybe that is being late to something. Yes. I, that was my first that was yours? thought was being late to something. Because I do that to myself. That's and I'm sure you do that too. <laughs> Jen's like, oh, that's my one thing I'm what going to do to let go of control. It is being late. Late. Okay, so it's maybe it's um being late to something. Maybe it is um not caring if somebody gets upset with you. Um, letting your family um have conflict you get don't get involved with. Like, don't end up being the peacekeeper, right? So I'm gonna have you choose one thing that you would typically control 
and then I'm going to have you check in with your anxiety during that. What are you feeling? What is the anxiety telling you? What do you think your body should be doing? What do you think your actions should be doing? And what would it be like to not do those things, to do the opposite of whatever your anxiety is telling you to do? So if your anxiety is telling you to, well, don't eat breakfast because you have to be on time, I'm going to say, I think you should sit down and have some breakfast. One thing is how we start because it is slowly building up to stress tolerance skills. The, I'm going to use that breakfast example. Yeah, sure. I'm going to just roll off of it. Because you, everyone um, should be eating breakfast, but that's everyone should be eating breakfast. Right. Um, or if you're driving and you're stuck in traffic, right. And you're going to be late to something because you're stuck in traffic, right? Like that is a, that's a big one. And so we, something we do, I actually talked to Nikki about this the other day. Um, that because I very often do this is I'll put on my Google Maps and I'll see how long the traffic is and mm -hmm. I'll see how long it takes me to get there. I've realized that putting that on it gives me so much more anxiety Ooh. because in the end, Google Maps does not change the traffic. It does Has not it? change. I know. You know, you're just so focused on like, when's this going to end? When am I going to get out of this? How late am I going to be? And to be very conscious of the things that you're doing that make you feel like you're more in control of something that you're actually not in control of mm -hmm. and how that's affecting you. So yeah. if you're late, if you know you're going to be late, you're stuck in traffic, you're putting Google Maps on, you realize that's reinforcing your anxiety as opposed to saying, this actually is giving me no more control, Yeah. right? Maybe it's, I'm going to put this on to let people know how late I'm going to be. And then I want you to ask yourself the question, what am I afraid of? in being late. What's the fear? Is it that people are going to be waiting on me? Is it that people are going to be mad at me? Is it that they're going to start without me and I feel, and I'm going to feel left out? Get down to the core fear of like, what's coming up for me, right? And if that happens, let's say people are mad that I'm late. How am I going to manage that? Yeah. How am I going to get through that? How am I going to talk through it? I'm so sorry I'm late, you know, hit a bunch of traffic. What's the worst that's going to happen? Thanks for waiting for me. Thanks for waiting for me. That's it. Beautiful. All right. Speaking of thanks for waiting for me, we have to get to Dear Em and Jen. <laughs> I was waiting for you. <laughs> Dear Em and Jen, my partner is really adaptive. If something doesn't go as planned, she can easily move forward. I find these changes really challenging. How can we work together to make sure that both of our feelings or perspectives are validated and safe in this space while we work through the thing not going right together. So we're going to have to tell her this. You tell her Emily and Jed said this. She's going to have to create space for you. Yeah. If she already has the skills to be incredibly adaptive, what we can have is like positive bypassing um, of we're fine. Why are you being like this? Right? right. So what we're going to ask for from your partner is for her to say, Hey, I know it's really tough for you when change, when plans change. Hey, I know this is probably really challenging that we got stuck in this chat. Like, Hey, I'm going to acknowledge and validate in some way. Cause if she doesn't need that space, can she hold it for you? Because that's the thing about relationships. They are not 50-50 equal. That doesn't exist. What is fair in a relationship does not mean, oh, we both do this all the time. She already has those skills. Can she hold you and hold that space for you in that time? Because you need it more. And there's other shit she probably needs more that you can hold for her as well. And that is why we study ourselves and we study our partners for us to have a stronger relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would also say the two of you sound like such a lovely balance <laughs> in so many different ways, right? Like, you know, it's nice to have someone who is a planner in the relationship and maybe someone who's more go with the flow. It's, yeah. it's a nice balance to have. So I think to also acknowledge like the two of you have strengths in different ways. And, you know, I would get just as you would ask her to be curious about your experience to say, well, what do you, you know, like, I'm here for you. I understand this is hard for you. What's your experience? Like, 
I would ask her the same thing. Like what, how, how are you so easily able to adapt to this? Like, tell me what this is like for you. How do you process through some, when something changes, here's what it's like for me. And I think you can also say, you know, I think, I guess our assumption is that this person's asking this question because maybe they feel invalidated Mm -hmm. when they're going through this. And so Um, I think you can also say like, Hey, I, I understand we have different experiences. Like, here's what this experience is like for me. And I don't need you to fix it. I don't need you to change it. I don't need you to try to help me in some way. I just need you to understand what this is like for me. I know it's very different for you. And, and here's what I might need in those moments. Here's the kind of support that would be really helpful for me to maybe adapt a little, a little bit easier. I think this is for a longer we have more time. Um, but I'm also wondering, we should probably do an entire episode. It would be interesting to talk about the complexity of being the partner with anxiety and the shame that it brings. Yeah. Because as we're talking, it's sort of like, oh, I put my partner up on a pedestal because they're so adaptable and they have these skills that I don't have. And it makes sense. Like I have done that a lot in my relationship. But I think that the thing we're not talking about is the shame we experience that we're not that person. Yes. Yeah. Like, like we have to change something about ourselves because our partner's not experienced the, yeah. experiencing this to the same degree. Well, and let's be fair. It's, it's, I would rather be the cool laid back person. <laughs> I want to be the cool chill, chick, the chill, chick, the chill that, chick, right? Like that's like my dream as well. <laughs> and it's my partner. It's not me. And that is really challenging because they always feel so much calm, cool, collected compared to me you know you're that partner in your relationship <laughs> yeah <laughs> and don't, yeah. Don't, it's probably kind of nice being that person it is <laughs> well also I've recognized maybe I'll speak from that perspective I've recognized that when my partner is heightened um, he is also looking for me to be heightened with him mm. because without which helps nothing, <laughs> which helps nothing, but, but I've, I have figured out what that means to him. And what it means to him is that means that I care. So in his mind, if I'm not reacting in the same way he's reacting, it means I don't care. And so we have had to communicate over the years about what's really going on for me that like, I do care. I'm just not reacting in the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that this goes back to the conversation around like really understanding your partner and learning your partner and having your partner understand you is that you could be feeling the same things or having just reacting to it differently. Yeah. Um, because yeah, I get anxious, but I also, I'll get anxious about things he doesn't get anxious about. Right. Like it's, it's a, it's a balance and I'm sure that happens for you. Does that happen for you? Yes, it does. Yes, yes, it, it does. Yes, of course. I'll tell I mean, you, it does. I, there was also other stuff that, like, the other day, like, my partner got really heightened by something yesterday morning, and I was like, I don't fucking care. Let's just get exactly. in the car. So, yeah. like, I guess there is times, but just, like, for the most part, it's... Yeah. <laughs> it's not 50-50, I would say. <laughs> All right. That was today's episode of Strength Chicks. Thank you for being here with us. I hope this helps you adapt a little bit more towards your day. Um, we always ask you to rate, review, subscribe, follow an Apple podcast. Um, if you're looking to be matched, oh, oh, um, we have merch on our website at shrinkchicks.com and on Amazon, look up shrink chicks journal. We have a journal now on Amazon. It's the know yourself, grow yourself journal, know yourself, grow yourself journal. It is on there. Check it out. Buy a copy. Give us a review. Um, we're trying to get more stuff out there for everyone. So there's lots of different ways to keep knowing and growing yourself. You, if you're looking to be matched with a clinician, we'd love to try to help you through that process at therapygroup.com. Nikki, the most amazing producer and the best head of operations in the world is going to help you. And we actually personally match each person crazy um and you can watch us on youtube you can follow us at shrink chicks and therapy group there's so many different things we just love being connected to you all thank you for being here and spending this time thank you for letting us into a little bit of your life and we always want to remind you that to know yourself to grow yourself you got to know yourself and you